No, oh, yeah, I knew it. It's gonna be a tap fest. Uh, I'm okay with it. What's happening everyone? Welcome to another Pokemon Go video. Today I'm going to be talking about PvP. Of course we just got the big announcement and we got a lot of details regarding what PvP is going to be and just like what a lot of people had thought it would be, it is going to be a tap kind of gameplay which we already kind of have with gym battles. Now if you want more information on what PvP is going to be like, I will put a link in the description below. Niantic put out a really nice article and a blog post basically talking about what PvP is going to be, how it's going to work, and exactly how you're going to be able to do it with your friends and other people. It's actually a really cool system and I'm actually really excited to try it out. But I'm not here to talk about what PvP is or how it's going to be. I wanted to talk about a little bit of strategy. So it looks like TDO is about to be the most important stat for a Pokemon. And of course TDO, it stands for total damage output. It's kind of like DPS, but a little bit more complicated. DPS of course stands for damage per second, which is the overall raw damage that a Pokemon can deal within a short amount of time. But TDO is more about dealing damage while also surviving. And it's something that a lot of players tend to overlook, mainly because if you look at raid battles, if you look at gym battles, it's more about dealing as much damage as you possibly can within a short period of time. This is why a lot of players will tend to choose Pokemon like Moltres instead of Pokemon like Entei. It's mainly because they're focusing more on DPS. But now it looks like TDO is something you will want to consider. For example, you would want to go with a Raikou over an Electivire because Electivire, although it could deal a lot more damage in a short amount of time, it is a lot more of a glass cannon compared to Raikou because Raikou has a much higher TDO. I'm really curious how things are going to be because I really like the fact that it is somewhat similar to the gym battling system in the sense that like you will be able to kind of tap and it's real time, it's not turn based. I know a lot of people are going to push back against that because they want that traditional turn based gameplay that the original Pokemon games had, but Pokemon Go is meant to be something different. It's a it's a, supposed to be a lot more casual, so I can understand why Niantic brought in a very similar system. I do think there has to be a bit of a rework, but of course you do see that they are including things like shields and another charge move for each Pokemon. I think that's going to add enough complexity to see how you know, you can diversify the gameplay that way. Now, of course, with this, we also have three leagues with CP caps. We have great leagues for Pokemon that are CP 1500 or below. Then we have Ultra League, which is for Pokemon that are 2500 and below. And of course, we have the Master League, which is unlimited CP. So really, it's going to come down to TDO for a lot of these different leagues. Like, I really suggest you invest in Pokemon like Regiice. Uh, one thing that you could do is aim for lower IVs, ironically, because lower IVs for certain Pokemon, they'll be up a higher level than a higher IV, but they'll be at a lower CP cap. So that's something you should consider. Like, for example, the legendaries from Research Breakthroughs, suddenly they have a lot more value because most of them are going to be under 1500 so your Entei's will be able to be used in the Great League so there's a lot to consider here and you really have to pay attention to certain Pokemon that you really weren't caring about before. Like for example, Cresselia is a really nice Pokemon as opposed to before where people were not really caring about this Pokemon, but it does have a really nice TDO stat. So if you want a nice Psychic type, Cresselia could be a great option. And we really don't know what kind of restrictions they're going to have on legendaries, but as of right now, it seems like they are allowing you to use legendaries a little bit more freely because of course, in their blog post they did mention Caterpie and Mewtwo combinations which is very interesting but yeah the fact that you will be able to use Mewtwo suggests that you'll be able to use pretty much any Pokemon. Pokemon 
Pokemon that you typically would not consider powering up, like Regice or Regirock or even Cresselia or even Giratina, Pokemon with really nice TDOs. Like these are Pokemon that you will want to consider bringing into player versus player battles. Regice could be a really nice counter to some of the dragon types. It does have a really nice TDO. And the fact that you can get two charge moves now means that Regice with, I think it's Blizzard and Focus Blast, like that's going to be a ridiculously strong Regice for PvP. So these are some of the things you have to consider. And of course, you will be able to challenge your trainer or what is it, your team leader, like Candela, Blanc, and um, the instinct guy who cares about him so you could train against these team leaders and mix and match your teams to see what works and i like the fact that this will be your way of getting the ace trainer badge finally there's a lot of strategy that's going to go into this especially for all of the different leagues it's not going to be about who does the most damage anymore like rayquaza is still going to be pretty good but because he's a glass cannon some people may tend to go away from him and go for something with a higher TDL like Dragonite and of course with a lot of different typings out there you want to look at different weaknesses and strengths of each type. I think Meteor Mash Metagross is definitely going to be the one to beat but to counter that I can see a lot of people using Charizard with Blast Burn or even Entei in order to counter these Metagrosses so there's just a lot that's about to go down and I'm really excited to see how Trainer Battles is going to work out when it comes to the strategy part of this game. I'm also really curious to see how the whole tap and apparently there's not really any swiping involved is really just about like a timing defense which I don't mind. I'm really curious to see how this is going to work because of course I along with several other influencers believed that they needed to change the battling system in order for PvP to work and it looks like at most they tweaked it but you know they tweaked it in a way where it does kind of work so I'm actually really excited to see how it's going to play out and of course a lot of people who already tried PvP like people who were invited by Niantic to stop by and try it they were saying that it's actually a really enjoyable fast paced experience so that's something that we could look forward to. I do have a lot of Pokemon with really high TDO like an Entei, a Raikou, a Regice, a Cresselia and of course Pokemon like Dragonite and Metagross with Meteor Mash. I have a whole bunch of Pokemon that I have leveled up up until 2500 CP so I'm really excited. I think I'm going to focus on Ultra League because I think that's where a lot of the cool dynamics are going Going to happen. I think with the Master League, it's just kind of like a free for all with whoever has that bigger collection. And I think with the Great League, it's just a little bit too low for me in my in my point of view. I think 2500 CP is kind of like the Goldilocks level for coming up with some really cool strategies while also being very competitive. I think 1500 is going to be also very competitive and kind of challenging, but I prefer going with the 2500 ultra league i think that's what it is yeah so that's the one i'm going to be focusing on and i'm really curious to see whether or not niantic is going to implement stuff like world rankings for this sort of thing i want to see if they're going to implement like weekly tournaments or like you know worlds like is there esports potential with this we'll just have to wait and see i think the gameplay is pretty simple it looks like a glorified form of rock paper scissors i mean it's not something that's too intuitive but for a game like pokemon go that simply works because pokemon go is a super casual game and if you wanted something really hardcore like that's where like let's go and all the handheld games come in right so pvp is finally coming to pokemon go i'm really excited to see how it's going to work out two charge moves that is a pretty big deal you're gonna see a lot of Pokemon that weren't necessarily valuable before become super relevant and super valuable now and of course with raiding and gym battling you will still want to use some of the higher DPS Pokemon like for raid battles if I need a good fire type I will opt to go with Moltres over Entei but with PvP I would probably go the reverse and go with Entei over Moltres that's really kind of how you want to look at it so yeah TDO is the most important stat now and really cool Niantic good job I'm really excited about this let's see how it goes in the future I really hope people just latch on to this and maybe it could become big enough to become an esport and have it be televised I don't know if it's intuitive enough I mean maybe if they added stuff like Pokemon like conditions or like 
you know, different kinds of boosts and playing field manipulation stuff that you see in the Game Boy games. Like, that would be really cool, but we'll have to wait and see. I think this is a nice kind of baseline system that we could play with, so... Yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to know what you think about PvP, whether or not you like the fact that they just took the gym battling system and tweaked it. For the longest time, I really did not want them to do something like this, but now that I actually see it, I actually think it can work. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this video, folks. Let me know how excited you are about PvP in the comment section below. And of course, if it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button and of course hit that like button as well. I'm Count Jinsula and I will catch you all later.